PA and also uh, currently the one that we prepared using a uh, e portfolio platform yeah uh, developed by UUMIT for all uh, UUM uh, staff academic staff okay so uh, for today's workshop the title that has been uh, given to me is uh, developing teaching portfolio case uh, narratives and evidences okay and hopefully uh, by the end of this uh, workshop yeah uh, all of you uh, should be able to uh, demonstrate an understanding lah, yeah, of the processes and also the components of a well-designed uh, reflective teaching portfolio. And hopefully, uh, through this workshop, you will also uh, be able to start uh, designing and perhaps developing your own uh, teaching portfolio yeah, that will integrate uh, case narratives and also uh, digital evidences uh, using various uh, online tools and the the workshop contents i i pro i divide it into uh, three uh, first we will look at the uh, introduction to reflective teaching portfolio uh, especially for higher education uh, educators and then uh, we will go through some of the processes and also uh, components uh, that are involved uh, components here refers to the contents yeah uh, that need to be prepared uh, in our teaching portfolio. And then uh, throughout the workshop, I will also uh, go through uh, to the examples of uh, teaching portfolio that I have uh, prepared using uh, UUM portfolio uh, platform, inshallah. Uh, hopefully the, the server for the e portfolio is okay eh? uh, because uh, last night it, it was down and then uh, Alhamdulillah this morning uh, is okay. All right. Okay, uh, to start our session, uh, perhaps we can do some uh, interactive activity just to ensure that everybody is uh, in the, the session and also uh, take part in the, the workshop. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think by now everybody should familiar with uh, Mentimeter because we have been um, implementing remote learning for almost a year right and then i think everybody are expert now in using uh, digital uh, technologies to support uh, remote learning and one of it i believe it's a uh, mentimeter okay so can i have uh, all of you uh, to go to menti.com okay and then uh, enter the code uh, 71779781 okay and then um Please give uh, three words that come across to your minds when we talk about teaching portfolio. Okay. Can I have your response on that, please? What are the three words that come across to your mind? Uh, give me the three different words. And if possible, give root words. Okay. Three uh words three different words not three words in a sentence yeah three different words tiga perkataan yang berbeza but it should reflect your uh, thinking perhaps your understanding or maybe your conception about what is teaching portfolio okay you already have responses there Okay, I would like to uh, close it first because I don't want people to uh, <laughs> look at other people's uh, yeah. response first. So just give what, what comes to your mind. Uh, I'll give you like around uh, 30 seconds, 40 seconds maybe. Okay, what are your conception of uh, teaching portfolio in three words? What come across to your minds when we say teaching portfolio? Or maybe when uh, you look at the brochure like, oh, there's a workshop on teaching portfolio. What teaching portfolio is all about based on your uh, current understanding? Or maybe you have attended a previous workshop huh? organized by uh, UTLC. 
on teaching portfolio? Orang tak sure sebab saya ada email yang dia forward tu. Orang penyertaan. Hmm, Padlina tak tak mute <laughs> mikrofon tu. Okay. Let me see. Wow. Okay. Still moving. Still uh, accepting responses. Okay. Baru 17 orang yang join Mentimeter. Uh, I think we have more than 50 participants at the uh, WebEx. Okay. So uh, this is one of the activities that we can actually uh, conduct in our teaching and learning. And that can be part of our uh, contents or perhaps evidence in the teaching portfolio later. Okay. All right. Maybe uh, we can have a look at it now. Okay. Uh, we have 18 uh, people joining in the Mentimeter. Uh, thank you so much for those who are uh, responding. Uh, well done. You are a very good uh, participants for this uh, workshop, uh, active participants. Okay, so I think as an instructor, as an academic, we always hope that our students are responsive while we are uh, conducting our online sessions. So we have to start first. All right. Okay, um, that's fine. Uh, we won't wait for all of you to, to join this, but from the words that come out in this uh, Mentimeter, you can see that the biggest word is philosophy. Wow. Okay. And then followed by uh, experience. Uh, that's another word teaching philosophy there, but because it's come in two uh, words, yeah. So it, it takes as one word there. Okay. And then we have a uh, journey. Mm -hmm. Feedback. All right, and then creativity method quite big there. Interactive, yes, wonderful. Okay, and then uh, what else? That is um, quite prominent here. Oh, we have uh, mm, pedagogy. Okay, approach. Mm hmm. Hmm. I'm looking for one word, but oh, okay, there is, there is, there is here. Reflections, yes. Assessments, biography, okay, and many other. How, why, and what, okay, that's also interesting, okay. Feedback, yes, mm -hmm. but still, I can see that the biggest word here is uh, philosophy. I don't know why. Maybe uh, we will go through this uh, a bit later. But yes, philosophy is actually the heart of a uh, teaching portfolio. Okay, so um, all of the words that you provide here is actually uh, some of it are referring to the components of teaching portfolio. And some of it reflects on the processes that will be uh, involved in developing a teaching portfolio and also some of it for example the how what and what uh, why are the uh, some kind of prompts yeah, that can help us uh, to develop our uh, teaching portfolio especially when we do the narrative uh, writing of our uh, portfolio Okay, and um, some of the words uh, listed here are also uh, reflecting or indicating the evidence yeah, that can be integrated in the teaching portfolio. So, for example, we have here uh, teaching activities, um, record, yeah, uh, we have feedback just now, okay? So those are kind of evidence that we can have in our uh, teaching portfolio. All right, thank you so much for uh, participating in this uh, Vibli, uh, sorry, Vib, uh, Mentimeter. Okay, this is just my uh, 
induction or my introduction for the uh, workshop. And it's also highlight the, the introduction of what teaching portfolio is. All right, uh, we go back to the slide. Okay, before that. Okay, so from your uh, responses just now, um, basically, we can define teaching portfolio as documents or statement okay, of our teaching philosophy as an educator. So that's why the word philosophy uh, was very big just now. Yeah. Okay. And then it's also statements of our responsibilities, uh, tasks, goals, yeah, teaching goals, and also uh, the accomplishments or achievements that we have achieved in uh, teaching and learning. Okay. And we can also define teaching portfolio as a flexible document. Uh, that can be used in a number of ways. Yeah, uh, it depends on the needs and also uh, interests of the faculty members. So, for example, I assume that uh, most of you are interested in joining this workshop, perhaps because all of us are uh, required to develop our teaching portfolio using the e-portfolio platform. Okay, and maybe some of you joining this workshop because you are interested to. Uh, submit for DTA, the Distinguished Teaching Award, where you have to submit your teaching portfolio. So it is depends on the purpose of uh, having the teaching portfolio. And what's important is that teaching portfolio is a medium or a platform yeah, that we can use to uh, showcase our best teaching and learning practices. Okay, and for me, Teaching portfolio is actually our professional identity, okay, or a reflection of who we are. The philosophy that we highlighted in the teaching portfolio is actually the reflection of who we are as an educator. Okay, I'm not going to talk into detail on teaching philosophy and the uh, theoretical perspective of teaching portfolio. Because I understand that uh, UTHLC has conducted uh, several uh, workshops on this. And the latest one was by uh, Dr. Shahriza from UMT. I've seen the recording and it's very good. It's very uh, detailed and very thorough in introducing and explaining what a uh, teaching portfolio is all about. So if you have... Um, join that workshop, I think you are in the right track. You have already understand what teaching portfolio is. And for those who are maybe not able to join last time, so you can have a look at the uh, recording that are available at the uh, UTLC website, yeah? uh, UTLC TL Gateway, if I'm not mistaken. All right. Oh, by the way, uh, for my slides today, actually I'm using uh, Genially. Okay. Uh, this is an an application that we can uh, use to uh, come up with a slide, interactive slide actually. So later after this uh, workshop, I will uh, provide you with the link so that you can have access to this uh, slide. Yeah. And while navigating the slide, uh, please take notes of this uh, button here. If there is an image like this, it means that there is an interactive feature in the uh, slide that you can uh, click or mouse over yeah, your cursor and uh, some tool tips or pop-ups uh, will, will appear, okay? All right, um, that's just a very quick introduction on what teaching portfolio is. Now we want to look at the uh, processes, yeah? Uh, what are the processes that involve when we want to develop a teaching portfolio? Okay. Um, I think almost everyone has started uh, preparing the teaching portfolio. Okay. But maybe you start from uh, scratch or maybe you based on uh, certain examples or you follow a certain template. Okay. Uh, that's fine, but 
it is good if we can have uh, an understanding of what uh, the process that should be involved in developing a teaching portfolio. So uh, this process is actually a spiral process. So uh, it can begin anywhere. Uh, it can start with uh, select or it can start with reflect or you can uh, start with publishing your e-portfolio with, without any content. Okay. Uh, but perhaps we can uh, go through one by one. Okay. So normally in order to develop a teaching portfolio, okay, we have to be selective. Okay. Because uh, teaching portfolio is not a storage of everything. Okay. We, we mentioned just now that teaching portfolio is a documented uh, statements. It's a platform for showcasing our teaching and learning practices, but it's not a place to put everything in it. Okay, even though we have been, for example, uh, you have been teaching for maybe uh, 10, 15 years. So there are so many things that happen during that uh, 10, 15 years. It doesn't mean that you have to put everything in the teaching portfolio. So we have to be selective. And the selection will depend on the purpose of having teaching portfolio, as I mentioned just now, uh, maybe just for the uh, purpose of meeting the KPI or you want to go for the DTA, or maybe some of us want to uh, apply for AAN, the, the Anugra Academy Negara, okay? So by knowing the purpose and also the audience, the audience here refers to who are the uh, readers or who are the uh, people that will be looking at our teaching portfolio, who that, who will assess our teaching portfolio, yeah? And also, um, depending on the context of the teaching portfolio that, are, that we are building for. So, for example, for me, I think uh, in the case of we as the uh, academic staff of UUM, we are all higher education learners. So, that actually has already set up the context for our teaching portfolio. Okay, so normally our teaching portfolio will only reflect on uh, our teaching and learning practices at the higher education. Okay, but if you are doing part time teaching uh, at the primary school or secondary schools, doing tuitions uh, part time, that can be part of it, but it's not the 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 big uh, things that you want to highlight in your uh, teaching portfolio. All right, and then. After uh, we know who is uh, our audiences uh, and what are the purposes of having teaching portfolio and also the context of our uh, teaching portfolio, then uh, throughout the process, we should actually uh, reflect on the uh, contents, on the uh, materials, and also on the evidence that we want to put in our uh, teaching portfolio. Okay, um, as I mentioned just now, teaching portfolio is not just about putting everything in the uh, documents or in the e-portfolio, okay? But um, we have to put our thought, we have to put our thinking, we have to put our reflection in the teaching portfolio. And um, if you look at the title of today's workshop, narratives, case narratives and evidences. So it means that we have to have a story. We have to have a narratives. We have to have a case to be presented in the uh, teaching portfolio. And it should be our own voice, our own statement, okay? Our own uh, thinking, our own thought. But we can connect that thinking and also thought to the, um, artifacts to the evidence or to the experiences that we have, okay? Uh, while we are becoming or in our journey as a educator. Um, so it means that to come up with a teaching portfolio, we need to be reflective. I've seen uh, some teaching portfolio that only list uh, you know, kind of like listing activities, 
uh, listing uh, teaching and learning strategies or listing the research that has been conducted. So that's not the, the, the idea of teaching portfolio. Yeah, the good or well-designed teaching portfolio should be uh, reflective in nature and also have some kind of um, experiences uh, blend together with the uh, evidence that we have. Okay, and in the process of developing teaching portfolio, normally uh, we will look at that what, yes, we can have the what are the things that we have done, okay, and then how we conduct the things, or for example, how we conduct the teaching and learning, and the justification also uh, needed, the why questions just now that we post in the uh, Mentimeter. So those are the things that should be in our uh, teaching portfolio, okay? Uh, so rather than just listing or describing what we have or what we are doing, we should also reflect on how we conduct that, what is good or not so good about the experience or about the approaches, and also um, we should put into consideration and also we should have some kind of evaluation on what should be done next or what can be improved further if you are about to do the same things again in the future. Okay, so that's the process of uh, reflecting in the teaching portfolio. And then um, publish. Okay, publish is about um, sharing okay, the, the, the teaching portfolio that we have uh, created. Okay, uh, I will show you what kind of uh, sharing or what kind of platform that we can use to, to share our teaching portfolio. And it also refers to submission. Okay, for example, if you want to submit for DTA, then of course you have to complete the teaching portfolio and submit to the UTLC and then the panels will assess the uh, teaching portfolio based on the uh, rubrics and also the criteria that are given. And as I said just now, this is a spiral process. And I think especially with the uh, electronic portfolio, the digital portfolio, or later we will look at the e-portfolio uh, platform that has been developed by UUM, we can always go to any process, okay? Even though you have done selecting the, the artifacts or the evidences, and then you have uh, done with writing up your thought, and then you have published it, but you can always go back. It's like edit, you can edit it at any time, yeah? So um, it's good to, to know that we have the e-portfolio uh, system ready because we can always start uh, from, you know, anywhere, okay? For example, if you want to start now and then you want to submit the DTA next year, for example, um, you can start from now and keep adding and editing to your uh, teaching portfolio. All right, so um, how to publish our teaching portfolio or what are the kind of platform that we can use uh, to share and to publish our teaching portfolio. So the conventional one is the printed teaching portfolio. Okay, uh, this is the example of uh, teaching portfolio that I have prepared uh, back in 2018. Uh, the one that I submitted for the uh, DTA. Uh, it's in the printed uh, format, yes. I prepare it using uh, Microsoft Word and I have like... Uh, 61 pages altogether for this teaching portfolio. Not to take, um, I, I would say that tak adalah tebal sangat, biasa je, uh, 61 pages, okay? But I have uh, embed in the teaching portfolio uh, the evidences and also uh, links to other uh, media, okay? So actually, my uh, teaching portfolio that I submit for uh, DTA last time, it was the hybrid version or interactive uh, version, which means that I submit the hard copy and then within the uh, teaching portfolio, the hard copy one, 
I have a link to my e-portfolio that I have developed before using um, the free platform, uh, Weebly. Uh, at that time, uh, the, the UM e-portfolio is not ready yet. Okay, and then I also have uh, some kind of uh, immersive technology embed in the portfolio. For example, uh, later I will show you, uh, I put a QR code in the teaching portfolio so that uh, the reader or the panels can scan on it and then um, it has some kind of augmented reality uh, video uh, popping up and things like that. Okay. So um, I think now we are moving towards uh, electronic teaching portfolio, which is uh, for me, uh, I, I, I like this so much. I, I, I love to have electronic teaching portfolio rather than the hard copy or the printed uh, teaching portfolio, because uh, based on the processes just now, we can always go back to any stages. We can always go back to uh, selecting, editing, reflecting, okay, uh, from time to time. And um, this is the, the main page of the uh, electronic teaching portfolio uh, for, for my uh, e-portfolio. Um, but this is still in progress, yeah? Um, I think last month, uh, last month or this month, there's a workshop conducted by UTLC with MIT, right? On this. I think this 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 month as well, uh, early of this month, okay? So, um, yes, it has been developed last year. Okay, and Alhamdulillah, I am the one who uh, given the opportunity to start exploring, uh, playing around with the uh, UME portfolio. Uh, no training, no uh, courses were provided at that time. Just I was given with the user ID and password, and then I just go in and, and try uh, putting my, uh, you know, materials from my previous uh, teaching portfolio into the uh, e-portfolio um, and that was uh, requested by uh, Prof Mali I think at that time uh, because uh, he wanted to look at some of the samples that we can uh, create using the uh, electronic teaching portfolio. All right so uh, these are the two uh, main uh, platform or main outputs of a teaching portfolio. Okay, so this the one. Oh, okay. I have an image here. Uh, this is the one that I submitted for DTA, and Alhamdulillah, as uh, mentioned by Fadlina just now, I managed to uh, get uh, you know the melepasi titi ambang for the teaching portfolio. Okay, because once you submit your teaching portfolio for the DTA, it will be assessed and you will get a uh, mark. And if you reach the titi ambang or the uh, points uh, set, then we can go to the second round, which is the uh, teaching simulation, okay? And if you manage to uh, achieve the TT Ambang for the teaching simulation, then you will go to the uh, interviews. And Alhamdulillah, uh, I managed to, to uh, get that um, through and been awarded with the DTA um, for 2018, okay? All right, so um, that's the two uh, example of the outputs of teaching portfolio. Okay, so far so good uh, now. Okay, uh, let me see if there's anything in the chat. Uh, no. Okay, uh, please at any time, if you want to interrupt me, just turn on your uh, microphone, okay? Uh, and maybe you want to share your opinions, your own thoughts, yeah, or maybe your own experience in developing teaching portfolio, uh, you are most welcome. Please, please uh, turn on your microphone and uh, share with others. Okay. Um, okay, hold on. Okay, please uh, excuse me for a few seconds. I need to plug my my uh, charger.
Okay, any uh, questions so far? Any things that you want to share or are so? Tell other participants about uh, teaching portfolio. All right, so um, if we can uh, recall back to the processes of developing a teaching portfolio, uh, the select and then uh, reflect and publish uh, or share, okay? For me, personally, I would say that the reflect process yeah, or the reflection uh, component is the important part of our uh, teaching portfolio. So when we want to develop our teaching portfolio, we have to uh, consider uh, that as the uh, important things. Yeah, And because if we are being able to reflect in our own teaching and learning practices, we will automatically be selective in the evidences that we want to put in our uh, teaching portfolio. Because uh, we will connect our narratives, our stories, okay, uh, with the appropriate evidences or the materials, the images, the video clips, the infographics or whatsoever uh, evidences that we want to put in the teaching portfolio. And I think developing a teaching portfolio is an art of professional storytelling. I'm not good in this. I'm not a good storyteller, okay? But to be able to come up with a good teaching portfolio, we have to have some kind of narratives. We have to have some kind of story to tell the readers of the audiences. And that stories are actually um, based upon these uh, several questions, like we should be able to tell the readers or the audiences who we are as an educator and what we are teaching, what are the courses that we are teaching and how we conduct our teaching. And also the, the philosophy just now, what is our belief about teaching? Because that is the heart of teaching portfolio where it will set the directions of our uh, narrations or it will set the storyline of our uh, teaching portfolio. And then we also have questions like how we improve our teaching and learning. So all of these questions need to be answered in a reflective narratives way, not just in a way of listing it, okay? It's not a CV that we submit for uh, becoming an external examiners or it's not a resume that we submit for kenaikan uh, pangkat, things like that, yeah? But it has some kind of story to tell in our teaching portfolio. And of course, when we talk about storytelling, Okay, uh, normally we want to convince our audiences, our readers, okay, with our story. And one way of convincing the readers uh, by having evidences. And I think we are lucky uh, as now we are in the era of digital technologies. There are so many technologies that we can use to support us in uh developing our teaching portfolio and we can have the evidences in the um digital uh, format okay so for example we have video clips of our uh approaches in teaching and learning or maybe we have video clips that show the outcomes of the student learning and i think uh for most of us Last year, okay, uh, throughout this year, we should have at least several evidence in the form of video clips. Maybe it comes from our recording of the lecture that we conduct uh, through WebEx or from the um, learning activities that we conducted with our students uh, using uh, various online tools. Okay, we will look at uh, some example of it. And there are several ways that we can uh, 
look into for organizing our reflective narratives in the teaching portfolio. And I think the most basics are either by chronology or by category. Chronology here means we can uh, tell our story uh, like by year or by semester, how we uh, develop our teaching and learning practices over the time, okay? That can be uh, in the chronology uh, ways of writing the teaching portfolio. Or we can also prepare our teaching portfolio by uh, categorizing the uh, documents or the sections in the teaching portfolio based on the themes. Or perhaps uh, the easiest for me, I, I like to have my teaching portfolio uh, based on the courses that I teach. Okay, so for example, I have like uh, two or three courses that I have teach uh, in the last uh, two, three years. So I will go by courses. So I will uh, organize my teaching portfolio by courses. But we can also have combination of both the chronological and also the categorical. For example, um, in one of my courses, like um, I've been teaching that course for several semesters. So at first I talk about that course and then in the uh, narratives, I tell about how I conduct the teaching and learning for that courses over uh, several semesters. Okay, so what are the differences or what are the things that happens? Uh, and that can actually uh, reflect on how we uh, improve our uh, teaching and learning practices over time. Okay. And there are lots of digital evidences that we can use, okay, to support our uh, teaching portfolio. Okay, and we can utilize uh, digital technologies uh, to store or to collect and also to compile and create evidences. I think uh, most of you, many of you are familiar with, uh, for example, Padlet, yeah? So Padlet actually is a great way of collecting evidence from our students, okay? This is an example of uh, Padlet activities that I conducted with my students uh, this semester. So even though we are conducting online remote learning, uh, we can always have lots of evidence in a digital format if we uh, conduct the, the activities using uh, Web 2.02, such as this, right, the Padlet. So this can be a live evidence, not a screenshot. Okay, we can provide a live link to that um, activities. So for example, if uh, next week I've been using the same uh, Padlet, okay, for other activities, okay, where I ask students to perhaps uh, evaluate uh, on these videos that has been uh, developed by their students, uh, by their peers before, then we can have more activities uh, in the comments, for example. So it will grow over time, yeah? Okay, so this kind of uh, example that we can uh, provide in our teaching portfolio or evidences, yeah? And then uh, YouTube, YouTube. Anybody has YouTube? Yes? Saya rasa ramai ni dah ada YouTube channel ni. Ha? Betul tak? Siapa ada kat sini? Um, kita tengok ada tak kawan-kawan saya dalam ni yang, hmm, yang saya kenal yang memang ada YouTube channel. Idea, maybe you have YouTube channel already, Idea? Dr. Idea? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, ada? Ada, ada. Ha, nanti boleh share lah. Dr. Linda. Eh, PM Dr. Nur Has Linda. Uh, kawan saya di SOE ni. Uh, mesti dah ada channel kan? Hmm, siapa lagi ada dalam ni? Dr. Surendran. Uh, saya yakin dah ramai yang dah ada uh, YouTube channel ni. Okay, uh, Dr. Fizal. Fizal tak ada hari ni. Uh, she's one of the... Uh, BTA apa recipient juga yang aktif uh, menghasilkan uh, bahan ataupun learning object eh, dalam uh, YouTube. So YouTube is a very good uh, platform to store evidence or to start uh, developing 
um, digital contents that we can use in our uh, teaching portfolio. So this is uh, my my uh, channel. Actually, I just started having my channel, the proper one. Okay, uh, last year, when's the you know, with the COVID nineteen, the MCO things happen. Okay, so here we can start putting our perhaps a recording of our um, teaching and learning session. Or maybe uh, if you don't like, like some of it can be the full report, uh, or perhaps you want to cut it into uh, several parts, then uh, make it a uh, chunk, you know, like uh, smaller micro learning contents, then uh, we can also have that in the uh, YouTube. Okay, or maybe you come up with um, sharing. Okay, you develop a video on how to use certain uh, applications, or you develop a video uh, sharing about certain concepts, certain theories. Okay, so that can also be considered as knowledge sharing that can be part of our teaching portfolio. Yeah, so all of this are examples of evidences that can help us in narrating our uh, teaching portfolio. Like me, personally, I'm not an art person. I'm not a good writer. Um, but with some uh, skills in digital technologies, so rather than uh, having my teaching portfolio in uh, written you know narrative ways i like to have it like more into uh, digital uh, narratives so now we are we are just we are not just talking about when we talk about communication it's not just about written or verbal communication right so we also have digital communication so this is the advantage of having all of these um evidences in the digital format so that it can help us in narrating our teaching portfolio in a digital way Okay, so I hope that uh, lepas ni ramai lagi yang akan start uh, buat channel. Kalau dah ada channel tu, uh, boleh mula share, ya, yeah? uh, gain subscribers, and then uh, macam mana cara nak nak dapatkan uh, banyak views? Uh, macam ni kan ada I got like one hundred twenty two views. Uh, this is I share with my students, and then I also share it in my uh, social media like Facebook, ya. Yeah? Uh, so that's that's way of uh, getting uh, views, and I think it's really really the time for us to start uh, having this kind of uh, you know video channel, okay? But maybe some of you are prefer with other platform. That's fine, okay? Uh, maybe you are more into uh, Instagram or TikTok or other uh, social medias uh, for video video kind of. Uh, contents, but it's okay as long as it is for uh, teaching and learning and you develop it uh, in a professional way. Okay, so the line lah channel kalau untuk professional ni dengan channel yang uh, suka suka tu. Okay, uh, macam setengah orang dia ada juga uh, channel yang for personal. Okay, and then uh, channel yang memang untuk uh, professional. So for us, I think as an academics. We need to have a professional uh, channel. So, jangan uh, campur campur lah. Eh? In our list of videos, uh, make it uh, look professional so that when we share it with other people, it will actually reflect who we are. Okay, ingat tadi, uh, what is uh, teaching portfolio? Is our professional identity is a reflection of who we are. Okay, so uh, ini contoh lah. Okay, so uh, anak saya pun dia ada channel dia sendiri. Uh, yang ni pun bermula masa MCO. So, if my daughters can have their own channels, I think all lecturers should have lah. <laughs> okay. Mm, okay, what else? Um, Facebook, okay, you can also share. Uh, macam saya kadang-kadang, if you have something happens, post it in the Facebook. Uh, and then later, you can take that. Okay, capture that and put it in the uh, teaching portfolio. Because sometimes we maybe maybe we don't have time to put it straight uh, right away uh, straight away to our into our teaching portfolio. 
So we can actually put it in any uh, social media that are easy for us. Okay, and then later we can easily extract that and put it in our uh, teaching portfolio. Okay, other than that, uh, our phone, our smartphone is our important gadget uh, currently. So you can have almost everything uh, in your phone. So use that uh, wisely to prepare the digital evidences for our teaching portfolio. Okay. And maybe one of the tips that I can share, um, normally in our phone or whatever images, pictures that we took, it's like so many, right? For one event, sometimes we have like 10, 20, or even hundreds pictures. But start to have like a very small report or very uh, short uh, picture collage, okay, of one particular event, okay? So you select uh, the most or some of the appropriate pictures that can tell uh, your your uh, contributions, okay? Uh, normally we should have like our picture in it, okay? And then uh, what's other things that happen in that uh, event or particular training or programs, okay? And then some details of it, okay? With the uh, title of the program, the dates, okay? So this will save your time later uh, when you want to prepare the teaching portfolio because this kind of one page or one uh, image can easily be embedded into uh, if you want to use uh, if you want to create your teaching portfolio in Microsoft Word it's also uh, easy or if you want to uh, convert into electronic portfolio also it's going to save lots of time rather than if you want to upload one picture and then you want to uh, you know uh, organize it rearrange it and things like that okay so uh this can be uh created using microsoft word okay so every time you involve in any uh, session in any training or professional development activities okay uh, create one page of that particular event put the pictures in it uh, with some uh, titles okay and the the details the dates okay or you can create it using Microsoft PowerPoint, okay? Or if you want to a uh, bit more advanced, you can use online tools such as uh, Canva, okay? That's a very powerful tool uh, to create this kind of uh, collage, yeah? Picture collage. Or any other uh, tools, okay? I believe that there are so many tools that we can uh, use, okay? Handily uh, using our uh, smartphone especially. All right. Okay, and then um, pictures. Yes, pictures of our teaching and learning activities. Okay, if previously we conducted class uh, in a face-to-face -face session, uh, so you have like perhaps one or two pictures uh, in the class with the students, but now everything is online. So um, from time to time, maybe we want to have like a screenshot of our uh, teaching and learning sessions, but not not every every time you conduct a session, you want to have uh, you know uh, pictures on it. No, no need. Just uh, be selective. One or two uh, will be enough. Okay, and then infographic. Okay, infographic also powerful in uh, helping us in uh, narrating our uh, teaching portfolio. So uh, similar to the picture collage that I shared just now, uh, we can create infographic using uh, Microsoft Word or Microsoft PowerPoint, and then you can also use Canva or uh, Genially, like uh, this one that I'm using today. And also our WhatsApp, okay? There are also lots of evidences, lots of testimonials sometimes uh, that we can capture from our WhatsApp. So before you delete all in the uh, WhatsApp group, okay, uh, maybe you want to star one, of, one or two uh, statement that maybe can give some uh, testimonial uh, to you, uh, maybe from your students, from your uh, peers, okay? Or screenshot that uh, particular, uh, you know, testimonial or captions and save that for the uh, teaching portfolio, okay? All right, other examples of evidences. Um, so if you have, non-digital evidences okay such as uh like this okay you have uh like thank you notes from our students or this is like 
saya pun jarang-jarang ni dapat macam ni. <laughs> so it's quite uh, sentimental jugalah bila dapat uh, card macam ni kan daripada student. Okay, but this is like from my uh, mobility students from China. Yeah. So ada satu semester tu saya tak ingat. Uh, uh, it was in 2017. Yeah. So bila dia nak habis tu dia bagi uh, thank you notes like that. Macam surat panjang je je lah. So macam sekarang pun saya tak tahu dah dekat mana surat tu tapi nasib baik saya dah sempat ambil gambar and put it in my uh, teaching portfolio. So um, start uh, digitalize the non-digital evidences. Uh, you can scan or snap photos and then uh, store it store it properly in one folder. So later if you want to come up with your teaching portfolio, we can just upload it uh, easily. Or we can also use uh, like this one, uh, QR code. Okay, so if you can grab your smartphone, actually you can you can scan through this uh, two QR codes here, and it will bring you to a video. Okay, uh, this is like example of student works. Okay, um, created for this course SGDM three zero two three. Okay, all right. So this is actually evidence of student learning outcome. Yeah, student work is an evidence of student learning outcome. So kalau kita kata at the end of the course, student, uh, student should be able to uh, design a learning object in a form of video. Okay, so if they are able to come up with the product, with the video, that's is an evidence of the uh, course learning outcome achievement. But the level of the achievement, it depends on the uh, rubric lah yang kita uh, gunakan. Alright. Okay. What else? Okay, so um, basically apa yang kita buat um, or whatever that we put in our teaching portfolio, okay, it should be based on the purpose and also the context and also um, the, the kind of like guidelines that has been prepared for us. So normally for us here in UUM, uh, we follow the uh teaching portfolio components based on anugerah akademi negara yeah this is the new one uh, previously when i prepared my teaching portfolio for the dta back in 2018 uh, the components are a bit different um it has autobiography and uh, learning philosophy okay ada tambahan kat sini saya letak kat sini autobiography okay for the dta and then um creativity and innovation Okay, and then um, ada, yang ni pun ada, uh, CQI, quality, Continuous Quality uh, Improvement, Evaluation and Testimonial, and then uh, evidence of how we uh, conduct uh, scholarly teaching and learning uh, activities. Yeah, It's just that the, the naming of the components are a bit different. But if we can follow this, uh, Anugrah Akademi Negara, uh, components for teaching portfolio, we are actually fulfilling the uh, requirements for the uh, DTA. Okay, so don't worry about uh, that. Okay, so uh, there's still a time for Anugrah uh, Pendidik Cemerlang DTA. Okay, I'm kind of promoting ni. Uh, siapa yang belum hantar pencalonan, boleh hantar pencalonan sebelum 31 Mac. Okay. Uh, later, just 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 nominate uh, yourself or ask your friends, your colleagues, or your your head of departments to nominate you. Okay, and then later, uh, you will be uh, given uh, more. Um, I think uh, specific requirements for the uh, portfolio, the teaching portfolio, to be submitted for that DTA. Okay. And uh, as I said just now, I'm not going into detail on all of these uh, components, okay, because Dr. Shah Riza has done a very good uh, workshop on that, okay. I have a link to his uh, video here, to his recording, okay. So later you can have a look uh, on it, okay. Dr. Shah Riza from UMT, he is the uh, recipient of Anugrah Academic Negara. Yeah, for uh, teaching and learning. Okay, anugerah pengajaran. Okay, so ada dua uh, part. 
two part on how to document your journey as an educator, part one and part two. Uh, and all these videos are available at the uh, UTLC uh, website. I'm not going to repeat on what he has uh, shared. Yeah. So, but but I I agree with uh, him. Uh, my conception of teaching portfolio are similar with what um, he has uh, shared. So please uh, refer to this uh, video if you want to have a look into uh, more detail about the components of uh, teaching portfolio. Okay. Okay. So uh, for today's workshop, uh, I will just give some examples on the previously um, teaching portfolio that I have developed, which uh, I will show you some example of autobiography, uh, teaching philosophy, and then uh, creativity and innovation, and also uh, the scholarship in teaching and learning. Yeah, because these are the components that I have transferred to the uh, e-portfolio so that I can uh, share that. Okay, so this is an example of uh, autobiography. Okay, this is where we start narrating our teaching portfolio. We start uh, telling story about ourselves, but in a professional way, not personal. Yeah, professional means um, who we are uh, as an educator. Okay, or perhaps you can have some kind of introduction on uh, what what motivates you to become an educator? Okay. Or maybe uh, your turning point. Or what makes you who you are now? Uh, saya yakin ramai eh, uh, di antara rakan-rakan yang sebelum ini datang daripada industri. So, if you are from industry, for example, what makes you becoming an educator? So, that can be a part of your autobiography your turning point so it's a good uh, story to tell actually in the autobiography okay so um normally we use uh the i yeah kata nama uh, diri sama uh, saya or i so we tell about ourselves it's very personalized okay we are not telling about anybody else we tell about ourselves and our students our activities our teaching and learning practices and our professional uh, journey, okay? Oh, all right, before that. Okay, so this is the uh, autobiography that I prepared in the printed version, the one that I submitted for uh, DTA. And I managed to transfer this into the e-portfolio uh, using the UM e-portfolio platform, okay? So this is how it looks like. Uh, I made some editing and I have some uh, changes in the way I narrate the uh, autobiography, okay? So, uh, mostly similar to the one that I pre prepared in the um, printed one. So, I just copy and paste to uh, the e-portfolio. And then I edit a bit, update, you know, and put uh, more pictures, okay? And then update with my uh, academic achievements, okay? Because these are uh, kind of like, the things that happens in my life that actually has shaped my identity and my professional career as an academic in the field of educational technology. So actually, I, I need to do uh, more editing here. I need to put more writing up, my own thought, uh, but I can always do that uh, later. Okay, just to give you uh, an example of how we can actually organize our narration and we can have some evidence. Okay, uh, but this one is not uh too much evidence that we need it's just like pictures just to add uh into the uh, story okay and then um for the teaching philosophy okay teaching and learning philosophy uh i think is the important part of our teaching portfolio because it will set the uh, direction it will set the storyline of our teaching portfolio. So normally in the teaching and learning philosophy, okay, if you can uh, go through uh, Dr. Shahriza's uh, video, uh, he talked uh, very detail about this, but basically it's about our personal values and beliefs about teaching. 
Okay, and also our reflective statement. Again, reflection. Eh? Reflective statement that describe what we believe and we need to provide some example, concrete examples of what we do in the classroom to support those beliefs. Okay, but in the teaching philosophy, normally we just uh, talk about the um, teaching and learning strategies, what we do in the classroom in general. But then in another section, we'll go into detail to support that particular uh, philosophy in our teaching and learning uh, philosophy statement. Okay, so for example, in my uh, teaching portfolio, I have set a direction that my teaching portfolio or me as an educator in UUM, uh, because I am in the area of educational technology. So my teaching portfolio will reflect me as an educational technologist. So my teaching portfolio and in my teaching and learning philosophy statement, I set the uh, storyline into technology enhanced learning, which will be aligned in uh, other sections of my uh, teaching portfolio. Okay. So uh, this is the examples of my uh, teaching portfolio. Actually, this this just like I convert, uh, I just transfer from the printed to the digital one. Okay. So I start with talking about my passion towards educational technology. Okay. And then we can have a bit of quotes in our uh, teaching philosophy, but not just that quote, how we relate that quote with our uh, teaching philosophy. Okay. And then I start to talk about uh, technology enhanced learning. What are the things that I'm doing in my uh, teaching and learning practices that will reflect my um, philosophy as an educational technologist? Okay. Where I believe in uh, technology enhanced learning and I support my uh, teaching philosophy with. Um, a theory, okay, of meaningful learning. Okay, so if you look at the um, explanations of what should we have in a teaching philosophy, it should be penyataan falsafah yang jelas dengan kepercayaan dan nilai, our, our belief, okay, and value of teaching and learning. And then it should be supported with theory or model that underpin our uh, teaching and learning. So in my uh, teaching portfolio, okay, this is just for example, I think uh, all of you have your own uh, teaching philosophy, you can craft your teaching philosophy uh, very well, and you can find one uh, theory that can uh, support or that you can use to underpin your uh, teaching and learning approaches. Okay, so put that into your uh, teaching philosophy. All right, so uh, there's a bit of uh, referencing here, uh, not not too academic. Tak adalah semacam kita buat academic writing, publication tu tak tak. But if you can quote just one or two, uh, that that will be good lah. Okay, and then um, we can talk about our role, okay, as an educator, okay, based on the philosophy, based on our belief. So how we put ourselves as an educator. So, for example, here, uh, I believe that my role in facilitating learning is very important to promote meaningful and conducive learning environment. So, my role as facilitator okay, is to ensure that I act to guide the learning uh, processes rather than to be the uh, sage of the stage. So, in that process, I let my students to become the explorer of knowledge. Okay. And then I also encourage them to become the creator of knowledge. So this actually uh, reflected in some of my uh, courses where when I teach them, when I conduct the teaching and learning, I 
do have like a course learning outcome and also the learning activities that are conducted that reflect and also achieve this um, statement of uh, philosophy. Okay. Okay, and then uh, we can have some uh, pictures to make it more interesting. Okay, so I put it here some uh, pictures of examples of uh, technology enhanced learning activities. Actually, I have uh, so many pictures, but because uh, to move into a portfolio, I need to put everything in one folder and then from there I need to upload into the uh, e portfolio. Okay, uh, we will go through uh, that uh, e portfolio platform uh, in the second part of my workshop. Okay, All right, so just example. Okay, so that's two examples already I give you. Uh, how we can create our uh, narratives of the uh, teaching portfolio. Okay, the first one is on the autobiography and the second one is on the uh, teaching and learning uh, philosophy. Okay, um, this is on the creativity and innovation. Uh, this the, the, the third part of the teaching portfolio, the, co the third components of the teaching portfolio. Okay, so again, in uh, whatever narratives or in whatever uh, story that I tell in this section, I will make sure that it align with our teaching philosophy, which is on technology enhanced learning. So it's good if you can have some kind of, um, not to say storyboard, but maybe uh, some draft of what you want your teaching portfolio uh, to be, and then you can start uh, crafting uh, or drafting what will be in the first part of the teaching portfolio, what will be in the second part of the teaching portfolio, uh, what will be in the creativity and innovation section in your teaching portfolio, and so on. And then we can have a look at it and we can make sure that it's aligned with our uh, teaching philosophy. Okay. Okay, um, I don't have link on this, but maybe I can show it from here. Mm. Okay, so this is an example of uh, the creativity and innovations that I narrate based on category. Okay, if you remember just now, we have at least two approach for uh, creating our narration, whether chronologically or categorically. So my approach is I go by category, which is by courses. Okay, so this is just one example. I'm not done yet with the e-portfolio, so <laughs> uh, this is just one example. Okay, so uh, this is how we can uh, develop our e-portfolio later. Okay, we can start with the course description. Okay, and then in that uh, course description, we can talk about the course learning outcome uh, that is related to the innovation that you want to highlight and choose one that is uh, aligned with your teaching philosophy. So uh, in this case, okay, I have uh, two uh, course learning outcome, okay, that are aligned with my teaching philosophy where uh, students have to uh, come up with interactive educational game and also uh, e-portfolio and this will uh, cater for their digital literacy and also uh, entrepreneurial skills okay and then uh, we can talk a bit about the uh, innovation okay so still uh, aligned with the teaching philosophy uh, we highlight back about uh, meaningful learning okay uh, immersive learning experience using technology uh, digital based teaching and learning activities okay and then uh, this is what I uh, mentioned just now that we can actually have a combination of chronological uh, narration in a category narration. So because I taught this uh, course for uh, two semesters, yeah, uh, A181 and then A191. So I arrange it in uh, like what happens in 2018. And then what's happened in 2019. Okay, so this is examples. Okay, and then uh, it's not done yet, actually, uh, this page. 
I'm not done yet uh, because I haven't uh, put in the uh, overall reflections. Okay, uh, but normally I will uh, put into the the uh, draft. Okay, uh, some of the um, prompts or questions or kind of like what are the things that you will be uh, talking here. So, for example, uh, I I put a note here to be added on self evaluation of the project. Okay, what is good and what is bad about the approach? Okay, and what students say about the approach, uh, which can be the testimonial. Okay, actually, I have all of these things in another platform, but I I need to pull it and put it here. You know, kind of like arranging uh, a bit. But yes, you can uh, always have a link if you have that in other platform. You can have a link to it. So, for example, here. Uh, I said, okay, click on the link below to see student works that reflect the achievement of the course learning outcome and for more information on the products developed by the students. So, this is an evidence of course learning outcome uh, achievement. Yeah. All right. Okay. And then we can embed uh, videos. Okay. So, this is an example of uh, videos embed into ePortfolio. So, that's why uh, our YouTube channels or you know social media platform that has content uh, is very important. But this one is not from my own uh, channel. Uh, this is from my students because uh, this video created by students. Okay, so we can always embed it and link it to the original source. Okay, All right? And uh, what else? Okay, we can have uh, more links. Okay, so for example, here, okay, it has links to the uh, products created by the students. So this is an evidence. Okay, this is kind of evidence that we can put in our teaching portfolio. Okay. And for me, uh, digital evidence is very powerful because it's kind of like life evidence. Okay, it's not just... Um, Kalau kita kata ambil gambar dalam kelas tu, it's kind of like kita, okay, jangan ambil gambar kan? But this is the the real uh, evidence, yeah, the real evidence. Okay. Let me close this. Uh, what else? Okay, so that's examples of how we can create our uh, narratives, our stories in the uh, teaching portfolio for this uh, section on uh, creativity and innovation in teaching and learning. And we uh, support it with uh, some evidence. Okay. okay what time now? Oh, okay. okay, so uh, another section, uh, maybe that I can, can uh, give you some examples is on the uh, scholarship in teaching, uh, supervision and evaluation. And if we look at the uh, criteria given by the um, GPT for the AAN, it will it should include uh, some kind of knowledge uh, sharing, perkongsian ilmu dan amalan pengajaran atau penyeliaan dan penilaian di pelbagai peringkat. It can be at the university level, it can be at the national level or international level. And it can be in any platform, for example, uh, media social. So if you are kind of, ada setengah orang dia suka buat sharing dalam media social, which is good. Dia buat live session, contohnya dalam YouTube or Facebook, but on a knowledge sharing. Yeah, uh, bukanlah TikTok yang suka-suka uh, tu, okay. Uh, ada content, ada topic, okay, relates to the teaching and learning. Okay, so that can be part of uh, evidence that can be put for uh, scholarship in teaching and learning uh, supervision. Uh, Bank care or seminars um, that we conducted, okay, uh, like this one today, uh, kind of facilitation, okay. And then uh, maybe on the module that we created, our uh, publications, our uh, digital contents. Okay, so the YouTube just now, the YouTube channels that has the digital contents that can be examples of OER, Bahan Pembelajaran Terbuka, or Open Educational Resources that can be shared with the uh, learning communities, that can be shared with other 
uh, educators communities of practice so that is part of the scholarship in teaching and evaluation and because from that uh, events that activities we can actually get some um, reward yeah? some some uh, pengiktirafan yeah? maybe uh, anugerah or us uh, facilitator pencerama uh, master trainer yeah and so on okay so that's kind of things that can also be included in our teaching portfolio okay uh, maybe i i can show some uh, example on this okay for example uh, for the scholarship in teaching and uh, supervision and evaluation we can have also a research on it so if we click here it will bring us to the okay so uh, for the research activities i only list research that are related to teaching and learning okay i know that we have so many research that has been conducted especially uh, if you are like like for me saya tak banyak lah lagi research uh, sebab agak baru jugaklah kan uh, but maybe for some of you you have been doing research for many years and you have so many research conducted but choose research that related to teaching and learning okay we can start by listing it but then we can um, make it more specific we can have more um, in-depth uh, narration of the research in another uh, section okay so for example here uh, on the first part of this um, section i just list the research activities related to teaching and learning okay and then i choose uh, several uh, out of this research uh, we choose again okay <laughs> so semua nak kena pilih-pilih ni uh. And we choose one or two or three, okay? Uh, maybe you, you, you can develop this over time, okay? The impactful research output. Okay, sebagai contoh, okay? This is for example, I have one uh, research uh, from the Sotel Research Grant on developing a student teachers critical thinking through collaborative brainstorming. So I talk a bit about that research, the output of that research, which is the uh, instructional design strategy, okay? Uh, create, uh, share, collaborate, okay? And then how, okay, this is the sharing part because teaching portfolio is actually sharing of best practices. So we want to share what we have done with other uh, educators. So they can actually uh, replicate what we are doing uh, in their own context, okay? So we share how to integrate, uh, create, share, collaborate in a scholarly teaching and learning practices. Okay, and then we can have evidence, okay, on the achievement, for example, okay, evidence on the achievement. So uh, this innovation has been registered as an intellectual property. Okay, so I have to add in actually here the 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 um, IP numbers. Okay, okay, and then if we go for uh, innovation competition, okay, so this kind of evidence of achievements that we can put in our teaching portfolio okay so for example for this uh output yeah, from this uh, research uh, i managed to come up with this uh, instructional strategies uh, design and then we go for um competition and we managed to get a uh, gold and also a silver medal okay so again um it's about uh create a narrative okay bring uh, audience bring readers uh, to our uh, journey Okay, in research, in teaching and learning. Okay. Okay, and then um, again, okay, this is another example of picture uh, college that I create using uh, Canva because it's, it's going to be like tedious, you know, like to put one picture and then another picture. Okay, so just make it one file so you can just upload one. So this is one image. Okay, just one image. Okay, we prepare that uh, in advance. Okay, all right. And then uh, maybe I can show you another example here on uh, um, another research uh, output, uh, which is from uh, grad, uh, 
grand uh, graduate uh, develop, uh, uh, sorry grad grad uh, disease from, from Setma ya yeah? on uh, pembangunan model insaniah e portfolio bagi meningkatkan keboleh pasaran siswaza so uh, it involves uh, teaching and learning uh, because it uh, one of the aim is to improve uh, students um, soft skills yeah but this one is still in progress uh, not done yet so if you can see here uh, it's need to be translated and then uh, there are so many things other things that need to be uploaded here okay and then uh, for the achievements okay uh, i also haven't uploaded the the model uh, and then uh, this is another evidence of what achievements or what impact of the uh, research that we have uh, conducted to the uh, teaching and learning communities Okay, so uh, if you uh, manage to come up with training based on that uh, particular research, so we can have that in our uh, teaching portfolio. Okay, so um, this is still in a draft format, but this is my way of uh, developing teaching portfolio because I think uh, with the e-portfolio is flexible. You can always go and add and edit. Okay, so whatever come to your mind and if you think that it will help you in narrating your teaching portfolio, uh, put it first, right, for this one. Okay, so I know the flow. Okay, I will talk about the achievement. And then here I will put the um, picture of the model, but I couldn't find it yesterday, so I didn't put it here. Okay, and then uh, what next and uh, so on. Okay, so like this one, uh, there's another training ongoing, but I haven't uh, completed that, so I haven't put it here. Okay, things like that. All right, so another example again, and this one, uh, this should be live uh, evidence. I want to kind of like uh, when people go to my website, they can uh, sorry when, when people go to my e-portfolio, they can just click here and it bring uh, to the uh, real examples to the link. But uh, I couldn't manage to do that um, yesterday, so I just uh, screenshot and put it here. Okay, but this is just to give example of how we uh, create the uh, storyline of our uh, teaching portfolio. Okay, and then what else? Um, okay, this is on uh, publications. Uh, publications related to teaching and learning. Um, again, just choose publication that related to teaching and learning. Okay. Um, and then this is not done yet. Actually, I, I, I want to have like link to if the paper is available for public access, then I want to have a link on it. But I'm not done yet because last time uh, when I did this, I kind of like copy and paste from my uh, previous e-portfolio. But in that e-portfolio, it already have the link. But when I put it here, uh, that link doesn't work. So I have to make it like one by one. But I think now it's, it's, it's okay. Uh, UMIT has solved that problem. And if you copy and paste from other source, uh, it will uh, automatically, if you have a hyperlink on it, it will uh, be available here as well. Okay. What else did I have? Uh, okay, this is an example of uh, learning community uh, community engagement. If you have, uh, but this is not done yet. Okay, not done yet. Okay, this is just I'm putting whatever I have, but I haven't put in my thought. I haven't put in my reflection. Uh, I haven't put in my own uh, writing up on this. Okay, the same thing uh, with uh, this one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so see, um, I have like, it's still in a draft, so it need to be added. Uh, I have to reflect on the program. What is the event or the program all about? What is my contribution in that program? What is good and bad about the program? Okay, and maybe I can put in uh, what are the responses from the participants so that that can give input for um, my action plan. What can be improved in the future? Okay. So that's our kind of things that uh, we can put in our uh, narratives. Okay, and then uh, we have evidence in terms of pictures or uh, links, uh, videos, news. Okay, this is the news. Okay, um, and I put the source here, which is come from uh, UM uh, Facebook page. Okay. All right, I think uh, that's all that I have for. Oh, okay, so um. Okay, this is another, uh, but this is not done yet. I just put everything that I have here, uh, but still, uh, as I said, 
uh, yes, maybe we can have like, okay, we release first, we, we, we give the bigger picture, okay, and then we can be more selective, okay, maybe we choose one or two events, and then uh, we reflect on that particular event, yeah, okay. All right, um, I think we are almost done with the first part of this uh, workshop. Oh, yes, I have covered the uh, uh, introduction to reflective teaching portfolio and also uh, processes and components involved in preparing uh, case narratives and evidences. And uh, throughout this, I also provide some uh, walkthrough to an example of interactive teaching portfolio uh, prepared using a UME portfolio platform. So uh, maybe we can have like five minute break. And then uh, when we come back, okay, when I start again, I will uh, have a look at the ePortfolio platform. But before that, so I hope that you can uh, be ready with your user ID and password for the ePortfolio platform. Okay, everybody have that, right? Okay, let's have five uh, minutes break. Uh, now, uh, sebelum. Hmm. Or oh, maybe we can start at 11, 11 or 5. 11 or 5. Okay, we will start again at 11 or 5. Okay, take a break for five minutes. And if you have any questions, you can put it in the chat. I will uh, have a look at it.
Okay, uh, shall we start uh, our second part of uh, today's workshop? Okay. Semua orang dah bersedia kot dengan user ID dan password untuk e-portfolio platform. Semua orang ada ke user ID dan password? Should ada lah kan? Sebab last time uh, Puan Asia and Dr. Hasniza kalau tak silap saya dah, dah uh, share on how to access to the e-portfolio uh, platform. Okay. Uh, but if you are not sure and if this is your first time, uh, I think the user ID is similar with our uh, UUM portal ID and the password also similar. Okay. Let me share my screen again. Let me close this first. Okay, so um, we need to log in. Yang tadi tu is just a view, ya? Yeah? Okay. Okay, so uh, we can try to log into our e-portfolio using the UUM portal ID. And also uh, the password, yeah. Okay. All right. So this is the main uh, interface of our UUM e-portfolio. Okay. So saya tengok ada ramai dah ni yang online. Okay. So meaning that you are already in the uh, e-portfolio platform. Kita ada... Dr. Haiza, Dr. Nur Pujawati, Dr. Amran, yeah. Okay, so if other uh, people are in the platform online, so we can see who's online. Okay, so yang Dr. Amran, okay, kalau saya boleh masuk, please with him. Okay, so normally uh, in our list, we can see member of UUM staff. Okay, we can see member of UUM staff who are online. Okay, who are currently online with us. Okay, and then um, we can add friend. Yeah, we can add friend. Okay. Okay, contohnya kat sini uh, Dr. Nur Intan Sania. Uh, Dr. Intan ni, kawan saya ni juga ni. Um, Okay, we can request friendship. Okay, so it will uh, send friendship to our friend. Okay, but this one, oh, there was an error. Uh, we need to put a message. Assalamualaikum. Kita boleh bagi salam lah kan? Okay, and so on. Okay, so it will add to your uh, friends list lah nanti kalau dia dah accept okay i'm not going to uh, go very detail on this because uh, puan asia from umit and also dr hasniza has conduct the workshop on uh, getting into e portfolio and what other uh, features and functions that are available in the uum e portfolio but in today's workshop i will just go uh, Kind of like giving examples on how we can start creating our uh, narrative, yeah, uh, drafting our uh, narrative in the uh, e-portfolio. Okay, so uh, this is the main page of our e-portfolio, and we will have the profile page, profile picture, settings, and everything. Uh, this one you can always refer back to the uh, recording from the UMIT, and also there's a help, 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 help. Yeah, help button here that uh, will provide you with uh, guides on how to do uh, certain things or features in the e portfolio. Okay, I'm just going to give you some uh, tips and tricks to make your uh, process of developing teaching portfolio much more uh, easier later. Okay, so we can go to our dashboard. Okay, our dashboard. Okay, uh, before that, I already have few friends here. 
who requested uh, for friendship uh, last time. Okay, Dr. Linda here, Dr. Izwan. I think Dr. Izwan has done quite a lot. Okay, dah ada dah ni Dr. Izwan dia dah buat dia punya teaching and learning philosophy one page overall strategy or maybe it's just the the draft of it. Okay, okay, ada pasal far dah dah dimasukkan ya. Okay, alright, so this is good. Okay, go back to the dashboard. Okay, so this is our own dashboard. Uh, we can see down here what other uh, collections or pages that we have created. Okay, up here is the uh, page or collection created by other people. Okay, so for example here, I think Dr. ID also has done quite a lot. Okay, this is about Dr. ID here. And then... Um, he has started creating her his teaching philosophy okay so he has some uh, images here and then some uh, statement of teaching philosophy here okay so this is a good start okay go back to the dashboard okay so um we can start by creating a collections or a pages but like in my case, I already have a collection like this one. Uh, this collection for each components of the uh, teaching portfolio. Yeah, uh, teaching and learning philosophy. I have two pages in it. Okay, the one that I show you, autobiography and the uh, teaching and learning philosophy statement. Okay, and then this one, I already have one pages in it uh, for the creativity, three pages. Uh, this one, uh, nothing here. Okay. This one, one, and then for the scholarship in teaching and learning, uh, I have seven pages already. Okay, so um, how to start adding collections or pages is by creating here. Okay, please let me know if I'm too fast here. Yeah? Okay, create a page or collection. Okay, so you can have collection or a page. Collection is like a folder or a header. So you will have header and then you can have subheading or you can have main page and sub pages. Okay. So I think I would prefer to go for collections because in one particular uh, section, I might want to uh, separate the uh, narratives into several topics or several sections or several uh, subsections. Or I want to uh, arrange it according to the course or the uh, things like that, yeah? Okay. So add collection. Okay, so you can give the collection name. Okay, so this is uh, just for examples. So I name it uh, like 00, zero and then uh, I put here... Um, showcase okay and then you can have a, a collection description here if you like and uh, why we have to put like 000102 uh, I think uh, Pon Asia has mentioned that because we want to arrange it later in a alphabetical order but because the title of our sections is not in alphabetical order so we have to put that 010203 so that it will uh, shows by order in our uh, dashboard. Okay. And then you can have a description here like um, just for um, demo, for example, here. And then you can have tag. Okay. If you like. Okay. And then next. Okay. So next means we have create the uh, collections. And we can add pages to the collection. Okay, this is one uh, page that I have, which not belong to any collection. So I can put this into this collection if I like, or I can add new pages. Okay, so in this example, I will add new pages. Mm, okay, sorry. We can't do this uh, add pages because this is like you have to choose and then add pages here. Okay, so that's fine. So uh, 
put down this one, leaf, yes, leaf. Okay, so we can see here in our pages and collection, we have additional collection here, zero, zero, showcase. Okay, so we can click here to look at the other features and functions. And if it's a collection, then we can manage that collection here. Manage, yeah. So we can add pages if we like. Okay, or done. Okay, and then if we want to have pages, okay, so because we don't have pages yet, so we can create new pages, add here, and then choose page. Okay. So this is page title, uh, it's untitled, yeah? still untitled. So for this example, I want to create one page for my course, uh, SGDM 3023, audio and video development. Okay. And then uh, you can have a, a description if you like or just leave it blank and then save. Okay. So if you go back to the pages and collection, you will see here one page. Okay, this is a page. Okay, you can just edit or delete. You cannot manage because it's just a page. But if you want to put this page into into this collection how to do that okay uh, you can just drop and uh, drag and drop here but we can go here and manage and then you can see here on the list of pages uh, there is another this is the one that i just created just now so i can click here and add pages so these pages we're done will go into this collection Okay, so far so good. Okay, ke semua? Boleh follow tak? Senyap je kan? Boleh ke? Okay, Dr. Tamran bagi thumbs up tu. Okay lah tu kan? Okay, thank you. Alright. Okay, so um, we can go back here and edit this page okay we can manage okay click here to edit okay so it will bring back to this uh, page and then there is a button here a function here for editing okay and this is where we want to start uh, drafting our narrative for this particular course okay so this course is the one that i'm uh, teaching this semester so I think I have few uh, materials to put in already. So we can start by adding block. Okay. So this is the top one. Okay. Position is where we want to put the, the block. Is it on top of the page or bottom? But that's fine because we can always rearrange it. Yeah. Okay. So I make it top. Okay. Here. And then I add. Okay. Block, if you can uh, remember my example, okay? So these are the blocks. One block, two block, okay? Block number one, block number two, block number three, four, and five. I have five blocks for this particular page, okay? And there are several types of block that we can uh, create, okay? So uh, we can have a block title. So, for example, here I will name it as a description, a description of the course. Normally, I will have that on top of it, kind of like the introduction. Okay, and then this is the block type or the content type. Okay, so if you want to make it like uh, you want to have a narratives, you want to have a writing up, then you can have text. Or if you just want to have image, in that block, you can choose image. And there are so many other options that we have here. Show more. Okay. Ada banyak lagi. Okay. 
For this example, the first one, I will choose tax. Okay. And then uh, you can write the uh, description about the cost here. Okay, because this is a draft, yeah? So I'm just putting the prompts here, right? The description about the cost. Okay, maybe you want to put in the CLO, alignment with the assessment uh, method. Uh, the, 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 you want to talk a bit about the teaching approaches and so on. Okay, so done and save. But before that, uh, actually you can have pictures here or link. Okay, uh, this is just like if you want to have a link, you just click on it and then uh, put a hyperlink. Okay, so for example, if this page want to link to another page or to outside uh, external page uh, URL, you can do that. Or you can have image here. Okay, you can insert image. Okay, uh, you can have image URL or image that already uh, uploaded to your ePortfolio platform. Or if you want to upload a new one, just choose file, okay, and find where your, your uh, images are, okay. So for example, here I have image on, but all of this, uh, I, I've already uploaded all of these files. So just choose one, kind of like, uh, just for example, and then you can open. So it will be uh, uploaded, okay. Okay, or you can choose from the one that already in the uh, folder, in the uh, portfolio platform. Okay. Okay, so for example, I just choose this one. This is not really related to what I'm doing, but just for example. So I can have this here. Okay, we can drag here and we can make it smaller. Okay, and adjust. Okay, and then we can continue. Uh, uh, writing here. This is like a Microsoft Word things where you can have uh, text and then you put in images uh, and then do some formatting uh, as simple as that. Okay. And then once you are done, uh, you can save. Okay. So uh, one block is done. All right. So you can adjust it uh, if you want to make it full or you want to make it like smaller you can adjust that okay and then uh i want to add more block okay uh add another block okay and then in this block i want to have for example um for the block title introduction video okay, this is just for example Okay, so the content type, if you want to put introduction video that are, um, meaning that you want to embed video from YouTube, for example. Okay, so for this purpose, go for show more. And then this one here, external media, choose this one, external media. Okay, but before that, uh, maybe I should go to my uh, YouTube first. Okay, we, to get the, the link of the video to be uh, embed, yeah. Okay, ni anak saya lah ni tengok. <laughs> okay, so for example, I want to share this or I want to embed this video in the e-portfolio just now. Okay, so get the share. Or the embed code, yeah. Get the embed code, okay, and then copy the embed code, okay. And when we go back to our e-portfolio here, okay, so we choose external media, okay, and then here we paste the embed code, okay. Uh, with and high, uh, you can adjust that, or it will be adjusted automatically, okay, and save. 
Tada! Okay, so the video is already in the um, block. Okay, then you can arrange it, uh, readjust it, resize it, and so on. Okay, this is like the default. Okay, uh, you can you can go beyond this. Okay. All right. So you have a description about the course, and then you have introduction video for the course. Okay, uh, this is just an example of a narrative. Okay, and then uh, you want to add more uh, block. For example, uh, this time I want to try adding. Um, I haven't do this before. Maybe I can. We can. We can try together. Um, learning activities or maybe materials that we prepare in Genially. Okay. So I need to go to my Genially. Okay. Okay, I won't be able to show you how to create a genially today. Uh, maybe another uh, workshop can can do on that. Okay. So for example, I have this video which I prepared for uh, that course, uh, which is on types of instructional video. So I want to share this. Uh, okay, this is my first time. Eh? Uh, okay, so there is embed function here. So we can uh, copy and then put it. Okay, we try it here, show more, and then external media. Okay, I hope it works for Genially. Hmm. It's still processing. Okay, I'm not sure whether it's work or not, uh, but normally it shouldn't take uh, this long. Okay. Maybe it's not work. Okay, this is my first time eh, trying uh, genially. Uh, anybody has tried this? Maybe you can share if you have uh, experience trying to embed uh, genially in the ePortfolio. Okay, otherwise, we can do another option. Um, if this doesn't work, we can close this. Okay, delete this first. Okay, and then we create another block. Okay, add another block. Uh, before that, we go back to our Genially. And then we get the um, link. Okay, just the link. Okay, copy. And then we go back to our uh, page here. We can have can have some HTML or, uh, okay, I won't do this. Sorry. Okay, we can just use text. Okay, and then we insert a hyperlink. Okay. So it will put a link to our uh, generally, so this is like um, interactive uh, slides for the teaching and learning activities. Okay, so we can save it here, and you will have. But it's not that nice, right? Uh, for having uh, this long um, URL here. So normally what I do is, um, so we can have some kind of uh, narrative here. Uh, you, 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 you have some kind of narratives. 
and then you talk about the approaches and then you can have like click here just like that and then instead of having that long url you paste it here save okay and then you can delete this one Save. Okay, so click here will bring us to the um, Genially page or Genially slide. Okay, and then we can rearrange. Okay, uh, based on our uh, narratives. Okay, is that okay so far? Okay, because last time uh, many uh, some of the the participants are interested to know how to embed uh, this kind of evidences in the e-portfolio. So uh, I'm just giving uh, some example and also the, the tips and the tricks lah, yeah, to make our e-portfolio more uh, interactive and more uh, interesting. Okay, and then uh, if you want to add more block, yes, you can. Okay, just add uh, any block that you want. Okay, so maybe this time we can try adding image just image okay so when we choose image okay we have to either upload a new file or we can have um images that already been uploaded in the ePortfolio platform so i just choose uh, any files here it's not really related to this course uh, this is just for example yeah mm. So many things to be uploaded. Okay, contoh lah. Ini just contoh lah. Ini contoh. Okay. And then save. So it will put an image here. Okay. And we can have like uh, the title of the placeholder. Okay. For example, um, in class. Uh, session okay uh, the placeholder title can also help uh, our uh, narrative it kind of like um, giving the title or the uh, subheading of our uh, page okay okay so i put it down here i don't want to make it on top okay because i want to start with a description okay maybe i want to have this description uh, first and then I will have example of uh, the video, the introductory video. Oops, where is it? <laughs> okay, and then we have the in-class uh, picture here, and then this one will be down here. Oops. Okay, you can just uh, drag and drop. Okay, play around with this. Okay, to make it uh, here, and then I want to make this full. Okay, so just imagine if you have done uh, writing up your uh, narratives for this particular uh, section or for this particular page. So you will have, for example, the description about the course. Okay, and then uh, you have example or you have uh, some materials to share. Okay, um, which is actually the introduction of the course, but in the form of video. So you have an option actually, if you don't want to write in a lengthy uh, description about the course, then just have one lines there and put the uh, video here. Okay, and then uh, maybe we have other sections where we uh, talk or we, we, we wrote in more detail about the course, how we conduct the uh, teaching and learning activities. And then we have some examples that bring us to the uh, materials or examples or the evidence of the uh, instructional materials that we have prepared for this uh, particular course. Okay, and then uh, later on, throughout the semester, if we have other things to add on, we can just add new blog. Okay, and then uh, we can add more uh, contents in the uh, section. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so maybe um, you can try this. Uh, take five minutes to create one page and then maybe we can uh, have a look at it. Okay, so I can see here uh, some of you are still online. Okay, Dr. Intan dah masukkan gambar. Tadi tak ada gambar, sekarang ada gambar. Okay, dah ada about me. Okay, so that's good, Dr. Intan. Okay. So I think that's that's are the main um, types of blocks that we will uh, create in our uh, teaching portfolio, the e-portfolio one. Okay, what else? Uh, okay, this is our all images. Okay, just similar to what I'm doing just now. Okay, you can just uh, add in. Some. Okay, at the chat this in from Dr. Intan. Boleh kan? Apa Dr. Intan yang boleh kan? Oh, okay, copy from Google site. Uh, saya yang dah lama bersawang. Boleh, yes boleh. Meaning that you can copy and paste the content from the Google site into your uh, e-portfolio. Boleh, boleh. And if you have like uh, in Microsoft Word, also you can copy and paste. Or even if you have it in your um, social media like Facebook, you can also uh, copy and paste it here. Okay, um, I felt humble since not many materials to circulate. Oh, no, no, don't worry about that. Uh, you will develop that from time to time. Okay. Okay, Dr. Idia, Dr. Idia, the share uh, YouTube there. Okay, so uh, but this is sent to me privately. Okay, uh, thanks, Dr. Idia, for sharing and chatting all. So you can start um, link whatever you have in your uh, YouTube channel or in your uh, social media or in any teaching and learning platform that you are using before. So for example, if you have in a Padlet, okay, um, if you don't want to have direct link, the live uh, evidence, you can just uh, screenshot, okay, and upload as an image and put it in the uh, teaching portfolio. Okay. Okay, apa lagi? Uh, tadi saya rasa ada satu soalan daripada... Okay, sorry, saya terlepas pandang yang tadi. Ada satu soalan daripada Dr. Intan. Uh, what if we don't have all the materials... Uh, to showcase for research related to teaching and learning. Hmm, takkan tak ada kot. Ada kot, Dr. Intan. Rasanya ada kan yang grant shortel apa tu kan? Normally, a shortel research grant, it's related to teaching and learning. But other research grants, uh, try to choose maybe one or two that uh, at least have some relation with teaching and learning, I think that 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 should be okay. Okay. Um, otherwise, you have to start. <laughs> kena, kena, apa, kena start buat research lah yang relate to teaching and learning uh, juga. Okay. But I think most of us, um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure for other, other schools, other fields. Um, but like maybe my friends from school of education we are quite lucky because uh, almost our research are related to teaching and learning but i would say that uh, for all of us because we are in the higher education so perhaps your research can also be related to teaching and learning uh, in the context of higher education it's just that maybe it's not really uh, looking into uh, approaches, not really looking into uh, instructional design, but as long as it has some kind of relation with uh, teaching and learning, 
um, I think that that can be uh, examples of uh, research that you can showcase in your teaching and learning. Kalau tak ada juga, tak apalah masukkan je lah apa research yang yang lain-lain tu. Uh, that's fine as long as uh, other evidence. But if you have more specific in teaching and learning, that that would be uh, good lah. Okay. Okay, ada apply tapi tak dapat. Uh, InsyaAllah, insyaAllah. Next akan dapat tu. Okay. Alright. Uh, okay, so let me go to the my dashboard again. Okay, so um, if I go to my dashboard, okay, I have one additional uh, collection here. Okay, with one page in it. Okay, if I want to manage that, okay, I can go create pages and collection again. Okay, and then for example, I want to, I feel like, oh, that page actually should go to my uh, creativity and innovation. Because if you remember just now, I have one section where I, uh, Organize it by course. Okay, actually we can go back here, manage it. Okay, manage. And then we can remove it from the collection to put it into other collection. Okay, so don't worry if you kind of like still messing up with your pages and collections, kind of like, oh, this one should go where? Uh, tak pasti lagi kan? Uh, it's okay, just buat dulu. Uh, make it as one page okay and then if you feel like oh this page not suit with this collection or it's not suit with the uh, subsection then we can take it out okay remove it okay this not removing from the e portfolio yeah it just remove it from the collection okay so okay so it will go out from the collection okay, and then done Okay, so it's still jadi kosong balik kan? Dah tak ada pages kat sini. Okay, so if you want to put this page into another uh, collection, for example here, creativity and innovation. Uh, kalau ingat tadi, okay, saya ada yang ni kan, based on courses. So I have one on technology and innovation in education and then uh, SGDP 4043 action research in education. Okay, and then... Oh, actually saya dah ada dah ni. Saya buat dah sebelum ni. Uh, tak apa. So, I want to have that page in this collection. Okay. So, go back to pages and collection. Mm, manage this one. Okay. But before that, I want to rename this one. Okay. I want to rename this one. Okay. Just to make it like, uh, this is actually just a copy or a demo version yeah okay and save because i have i already have a page uh, with the same name okay and then go back to pages and collection um here in creativity and innovation manage go to manage okay and then we we will have this option to add that page into this collection. So choose that one and add pages. So it will bring to this page, uh, to this collection here. Okay, this is the new one that I created, the demo one. Okay, so if I want to uh, rearrange it, okay, I can just uh, use this arrow button to move it, uh, to, to, to rearrange the order of the, uh, pages how it will appear in the uh, collection okay so once done click here and then uh, if you go back to your collection here you will uh, have it here so it's kind of like adding to your uh, narration to your stories okay before you have uh, for this one particular course and then maybe this semester you add another one Okay, and then next semester, you can add another one and so on. Okay, so this is the one that I just created. All right. Okay, 
So in any time, if you want to edit your page, just click here, this uh, edit function here. Okay, and then there's another uh, button here to, to, to go to the editing, yeah, to configure the blog. Okay, and then you can always go back and update your uh, narratives or your writing ups or your evidences. Okay, if you want to put evidence and so on. Okay, I'm not a fan of putting images in the um, text block. Okay, because uh, I find it a bit um, susah sikit nak susun. Yeah? Um, it's kind of like you can just put one picture and then another one. Okay, uh, you can't have it. You can have it next to it, but the, the 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 display is not as good as if you put it just images, okay? Because you can't put this image uh, to center. Uh, there's a, li a limitation on this, okay? So normally uh, for the text block, I will just have text. And then for images, I will put it in another block that only put uh, the image okay other than image we can actually have a gallery as well okay okay we can have um, image gallery okay pdf is pdf you just uh, embed pdf uh, files to download uh, folders uh, some html i'm not sure about this i haven't tried those from uh, SOC mungkin panel lah ni. Uh, play around with this. Dr. Amran boleh kot share. Uh, kalau siapa yang dah try. Okay. And then kalau you nak masukkan forum post pun boleh. But I haven't do on that. Sebab saya rasa for the teaching portfolio. Um, it's more about uh, showcasing our um, teaching and learning practices. Okay. And then, in fact, for the um, activity macam forum apa semua ni, selalunya kita buat dekat UM Online Learning kan. So, it's not really into the teaching portfolio lah. But you can try if you like. You can try. Okay. Hmm. Ada banyak lagi. Saya pun tak habis explore lagi sebenarnya. Okay. Saya tak habis explore lagi. Um, saya buat hari tu pun like November macam tu. Uh, just for sample for UMIT uh, for Malik untuk dia uh, present for untuk ni lah yeah. so saya just upload upload je apa yang ada just to show like what we can do in the uh, e-portfolio what kind of uh, materials that we can have in the e-portfolio okay okay Dr. Amran masih belajar. Okay, tak apa. Belajar nanti kalau dapat boleh share-share dengan kita. Alright. So, ada apa soalan lain tak? Ada apa lah yang rasa nak tahu yang nak saya tunjuk? Saya rasa semua macam dah okey dah. Dah cover dah. Uh, apa ya? Eh? Okay. Oh, maybe uh, macam mana kita nak share? Uh, okay, tadi kita dah create. Okay. So, go back to pages and collection. Okay. Kalau kita tengok dekat sini, in our collection, uh, but this one is like, because there's no entry here. Okay, can you see this, uh, dia macam lock, unlock ni kan? Okay, this is actually indicating whether um, it is, can be shared or who can view the pages. Okay, like for me, uh, all of my pages are set to public. So, macam tadi, yang ni. Walaupun kita tak log in, uh, kita boleh tengok. Okay, but we have to make it public. Otherwise, only uh, people, only users within the UMIT uh, staff group tadi tu, eh, within uh, UM staff, uh, sahaja yang boleh tengok. But if we want to share it for um, external audience, yeah, untuk orang luar, then we have to make it public. Okay, yang tu nak buat di mana... Um, Kita pergi dekat, uh, jadi saya ni saya dah lama tak buat, ni nak lupa. Okay, 
Kita pergi dekat uh, Share Okay dekat share ni Okay dekat share Okay So kita boleh tengok dekat sini Kita punya collections And also pages Okay So uh, kalau ingat tadi dalam saya punya portfolio saya dah ada enam collections. I've already uh, create the templates for all of this uh, collection. Okay. And the access list all are public. So if you want to make it uh, tak nak buat dia public so just edit access kat sini. Edit access. Okay. So here share with Uh, you can choose either friend. Friend tadi yang request friend apa semua tu. Uh, they are friends. Or group. If we belong to particular group. Kalau kita ada masuk dalam group. Macam tadi ada group uh, UMIT. Group uh, UME portfolio kan. Okay. Ataupun only registered users. Maksudnya. All uh, UM staff yang registered dengan portfolio platform ni. Ataupun uh, within UM staff. Okay. So yang ni kita boleh set. Okay. So terpulanglah. Yang ni terpulang kepada uh, macam mana you nak share you punya e-portfolio. Okay. But for me I think um, that's the purpose of having teaching portfolio is to share our uh, practices to others. So make it public lah. Yeah? Okay but maybe if you are still in the drafting uh, stage macam tak ready lagi kan masih dalam uh, draft uh, you can Uh, set the access to like macam uh, apa strict to the friends only ke dalam group uh, dalam group ataupun uh, among UM staff saja. Okay, kemudian bila dah siap baru kita buat dia jadi uh, public pun boleh juga. Okay, in fact you boleh uh, set the timeline kat sini. You nak dia public daripada bila sampai bila. Okay, okay. and then uh, Okay, safe. Okay, so that's uh, where we can uh, set the uh, sharing. Okay, for the pages, sama juga. Okay. Okay, yang ni dia masih lock. Eh, sebab saya tak 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 siap lagi buat yang ni hari tu. Okay, memang kosong pun. In fact, tak ada apa lagi dalam tu. Okay, so it's not shared yet. Okay. Right. So ada two pending friends ni request friends or oh, Dr. Idia friends. Hi. Can I, yes. Sure. No problem. Okay. Uh, so nanti saya boleh tengoklah Dr. Idia punya profile. Okay tapi kosong lagi ni. Uh, so boleh start uh, adding your teaching portfolio. Okay. Okay, engage ni uh, itulah yang tadi ada people, group, uh, group kita nak masuk dalam group apa. But so far rasanya uh, tak banyak group lagi yang ada. So saya pun tak tak go into that lah. Okay, Assalamualaikum Dr. Oh, ni Dr. Fauzia ni, Kak Fauzia ni daripada school saya ni. Okay, boleh. InsyaAllah boleh. Okay, kita approve. Okay, nak. Uh. Okay, ni pun kosong lagi Kak Fazian. Boleh, boleh, boleh add on lah. Okay. Siapa lagi yang ada dalam dashboard saya ni? Okay, ada apa-apa lagi tak yang nak saya kongsikan berkaitan dengan e-portfolio ni? Untuk menghasilkan uh, naratif dan juga uh, evidences. Any specific uh, questions? Tak ada? Semua terror dah kot ni. Okay so kalau semua dah okay. Okay cuma mungkin kita boleh tengok kot uh, some of the latest. Okay Dr. Amran punya. Boleh tak Dr. Amran? Oh okay. Alright so uh, just for sharing eh. Kita share dengan kawan-kawan lah. Okay so dah boleh masukkan uh, blog dan dah boleh masukkan Uh, kind of like the prompts on what uh, you will add later okay, and then uh, masukkan images okay that's that's good 
Okay. Okay. Tengok ada lagi tak? Hmm. Berarti dia dah ada tadi. Belum ada eh. Kosong lagi tadi. Okay. So uh, saya rasa yang tu sahaja uh, on the e-portfolio platform on how to uh, start creating uh, our narratives and also uh, crafting the narratives and also how to put the evidence in the uh, e-portfolio using uh, UUM e-portfolio platform. Actually, uh, dia tak akan ambil masa yang lama untuk uh, buat ni kalau kita dah ada bahan-bahan. Okay, so maybe sebelum uh, kita betul-betul uh, come up with our teaching portfolio, kita boleh uh, plan dulu okay, how our teaching portfolio um, will look like. Okay, What is our teaching philosophy? Uh, what is our storyline for the teaching portfolio? Okay, and then uh, kita start compile uh, bahan okay, and then uh, kita boleh mulalah uh, develop kita punya teaching portfolio. But for me, uh, it's okay to just add on the go. So maksudnya ada je apa you letak. Ada je letak dulu. Okay so sambil-sambil tu nanti um, kita edit balik, kita refresh balik, eh, kita karang balik dan uh, kita boleh improve lah from time to time. Okay anything else? Tak ada. Okay kalau tak ada saya rasa kita boleh boleh habis dah ni. Okay, last last chance. <laughs> Ramai lagi yang masih dalam ni. Ada 47 orang lagi ni. Okay, saya, saya tak boleh nampak lagi yang lain. Okay, tak apa. Kalau uh, semuanya okay, uh, no questions. Uh, saya rasa kita boleh uh, close kita punya ni session. Sana saya buka. Saya tutup-tutup ni dulu. Okay, boleh tak kita pergi menti sekali lagi? Uh, menti meter. Uh. Oh, okay. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Tanya, tanya yeah, kalau yeah. boleh hasil saya tertinggal somewhere else, boleh upload mm -hmm. ke PDF file. Maksud contoh saya ada portfolio yang perlu duk hantar dekat perodekan yang dalam bentuk PDF kan? Okay. Ada ada ruang untuk upload dokumen PDF tak? Format PDF. Ada? Ada? Okay. Dalam dalam blog ha, tadi dalam Lagi blog ada. tadi ha, dalam blog uh, kita pilih blog type tu ada uh, upload PDF tadi tu ada noh ha okey okey hmm, ada tak saya tengok terima kasih uh, tapi kalau macam uh, you nak upload this is it the entire PDF ah ya yeah. e dokumen tapi dalam bentuk PDF dokumen words tu tapi in PDF lah boleh ya Yeah, yeah, but is it the entire teaching portfolio? Ah, yes. Uh, boleh lah, tapi dia macam tak berapa sesuai dengan konsep uh, e-portfolio yang uh, platform yang dibangunkan ni lah. Sebab nanti dia kind of like macam you upload je satu kat situ. Yang previous uh. yang lama lah masa saya version lama. Uh, boleh lah, boleh lah kalau kita nak letak yang itu sebagai yeah, macam empire. somewhere dekat introduction ke Kan, yeah, dekat yeah. kita punya autobiography ke just to show that uh, we have developed our teaching portfolio. Uh, this is what we have done uh, before and then now we are moving into uh, e-portfolio. Okay and then uh, we, we make it more interactive lah menggunakan yang e-portfolio. Otherwise nanti macam uh, just upload macam tu lagi dia kan appear kat situ kena klik dan macam kita baca PDF file biasa lah. Mana kita nak initially lah kan the, the, apa, the, the 
chronology of our development of if if portfolio tu sendiri boleh lah kalau nak put uh, as boleh boleh saya rasa mungkin lah. dekat bahagian Box. awal tu kan dekat introduction tu dekat autobiography uh, ke uh, so you uh, can have like one blog uh, dekat situ dekat okay, bawah ni ke mana yeah. ke okay so um, this is my previously uh, my previous teaching portfolio ke apa ke boleh lah uh, okay, okay. okay so kita boleh nampak jugalah you punya development tu from the previous uh, teaching portfolio to the new uh, teaching portfolio dalam bentuk e portfolio. Aha. Okay. Saya try this. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, ada tak yang nak join lagi <laughs> Mentimeter ni? Uh, based on today's workshop, how would you start preparing your digital evidences? So what is your planning? Mungkin boleh uh, share sikit lah. Uh, this is kind of like maybe what you get from this uh, workshop. Okay, so what uh, you prepare, what what you plan to do uh, next uh, to start preparing your digital evidence. Okay, nak start buat YouTube channel ke? <laughs> nak start scan semua dokumen ke? Boleh tak? Share sikit. Okay. So saya uh, tinggalkan Mentimeter ni untuk uh, you all can you can access it at any time just go to menti.com and then code dekat situ 71779781 um, after this workshop pun you can still uh, add on lah yeah, uh, Mentimeter ni I'm not going to discuss uh, into detail on that okay so I think uh, itu sajalah kot uh, untuk sesi kita pada hari ini dan I think I have uh, covered uh, the the workshop uh, learning outcome. First, tadi kita dah tengok on the uh, processes, okay, involves in developing a teaching portfolio. Okay, and then yang kedua tadi kita dah tengok on the component secara uh, keseluruhan lah ya. Uh, I'm not going into detail sebab uh, you can always refer back to uh, the workshop on teaching portfolio by uh, Dr. Shah uh, Riza. And then uh, I've also uh, do the walkthrough, okay, provide you with uh, some examples of teaching portfolio, how we can narrate, okay, or present case uh, evidence, okay. So, macam contoh tadi, uh, by courses, is that's an example of case evidence, okay, case narratives, okay, and then we have evidence in the um, narratives. Okay, and then I also uh, show you some uh, demonstration on how we can actually uh, start uh, drafting and crafting our uh, teaching portfolio in the e-portfolio platform yeah, by UUM. So uh, that's a very new platform, but I think it is it's very good. Um, please try and please explore further. Uh, Inshallah, uh, we'll like it. Uh, and we can uh, like, Sebulan pun siap kot Kita punya teaching portfolio Don't worry It took like For me uh, Untuk saya prepare teaching portfolio Yang for the DTA tu Just like 2-3 uh, months kot <laughs> Okay uh, Tapi memang kena buat Betul-betul uh, masa tu Just take time for that uh, Then kita buat Dan siap lah InsyaAllah So okay uh, With that uh, I would like to thanks uh, All of you uh, For participating In this uh, workshop And I pass back to uh, Fadlina. Okay, terima kasih. Thank you very much Dr. Siti Nazwa untuk uh, sesi perkongsian uh, hari ini. Uh, kepada semua peserta saya mohon untuk uh, isi borang uh, penilaian bengkel di bit.ly slash utlc evaluation 21. Um, dan sekejap lagi saya akan uh, share semula untuk QR attendance kepada yang tak sempat share. Uh, Mungkin ada soalan terakhir untuk si Dr. Siti? Ada tak? Ada, tak ada. Okay, kalau tak ada, uh, saya nak bagi, ada saya letak dalam chat uh, link kepada slide tadi eh. Uh, bit.ly slash um, ETP. So that's the link uh, to the slides.
Okey. Terima kasih sekali lagi Dr. Siti Nazwa dan terima kasih semua kepada yang menyertai bengkel pagi ni.